Hello guys, welcome back to Country View Acres. In today's video, we're out here in our garden area and we just finished getting this completely fenced in. So now the garden is, is secure from the wildlife, it's secure from our own dogs that are getting in here tearing up the plants and I am ready to get this thing planted. So the next step is gonna be to cover this whole ground with landscape fabric or woven weed cover. And that is exactly what you saw me drag in here. That was the fabric we used last year. And it, it does last several years. You'll, it's a little bit of an investment, but you'll get several years of use out of it. And it will make it where there's almost no weeding to be done at all. It makes it a pretty maintenance-free garden. And even though that fabric is black, it, it actually helps hold the moisture in the ground and you'll actually, you don't have to water as often as well. It's another benefit of the fabric. So we're gonna go ahead and take last year's and we're gonna start uh, laying it out and covering the ground here. And as you see me lay this out, you'll see that I space it from the end um, of that raised bed over there. And that's because we're gonna come back and we're gonna lay another piece of fabric down. We're gonna go the other direction and we'll overlap that fabric. And all the dirt that's exposed should be covered when we're done. And then hopefully we won't have any weeds pretty much grow up. The only place the weed will grow up is gonna be kinda, of, you will you have a hole where you plant your plant and it'll just be right around that plant that you might get a few weeds. But let's go ahead and start laying this uh, fabric out and start getting it uh, stapled to the ground. We're gonna be using like landscape, what they call it, landscape staple. And that's what's gonna secure this to the ground. So you will notice that I didn't till the garden or anything and there is a little bit of weeds and stuff in here. I didn't do nothing. All those weeds that are under this fabric, they're gonna die. That's not gonna be a problem. The only problem is, is gonna be where the holes that the plants are. So when you dig your hole out to put your, to plant your plant, you just make sure that you pull the weeds out of that spot when you plant your plant, and then you should be pretty good uh, weed-free garden. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So that may have only been a few seconds on video, but that took most of my day yesterday to get the fabric down here on the garden. So I am still short a few pieces. I still got a little bit more I need to put down, but I ended up running out of the landscape staples. And I was trying to go sparingly as I went along, so to try to stretch my supply as far as I could. But let me show you a little bit closer look at this fabric and what it really is. So this is a piece of the cutoff landscape fabric, and if you look at this, there is there's a weave to it. You can see that it is woven. Um, and when you're putting those landscaping staples through, you're really trying to get it to, to work in between a couple of those weaves and poke through. And when you uh, put this on top of each other, we're doing like a six inch overlap on most of this. And um, once you overlap that, then you've got two of them to poke through. So the more layers you get, the harder it is to get the staples started. And uh, 
uh, once you get them through the fabric then it's fairly easy to get them into the ground but being woven this thing does breathe and it does let water through so we actually got rain last night it's really weird looking because the brand this is brand new fabric right here that I'm standing on and it actually has a little bit of water left beaded on top because it's brand new so the water's not going through quite as well the rest of the garden there's not any water on at all that that older fabric since it's been used a little bit the water seeps through it a lot easier so you can tell a difference in the brand new roll that I have sitting here and the old stuff but over time this will let all the water through it a lot easier as well and um, it's just really good stuff but it's 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 um, it's woven tight enough that weeds won't be able to get through so the biggest problem I had last year is probably right along the edges of the raised beds um, I put my landscape fabric over there but then I'd still get weeds growing through so this year I'm doing something a little bit different I'm taking my landscape fabric and I'm kind of making it go up the side of the raised beds and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take like some furring strips we're gonna go cut some pieces of wood and I am gonna screw uh, that furring strip to hold the fabric against the raised bed so there's no gap at all and I won't have any chance of weeds coming through now that being said all the fabric that I do on the outside and I screw to these raised beds I don't plan on taking up at all I'm gonna leave it there until the fabric goes bad so I I plan on leaving uh, all the fabric on the edges you know I'm gonna leave that there for several years so this is a little bit of extra work, but it will help me in the end from, from weeding. So I've already got one day's worth of work to at least cover the garden area, but that's probably already going to save me several days worth of weeding throughout the year. So let's go ahead and get started, see if we can finish some things up today. Um, we got to go cut some furry strips. We're going to go make some of our own homemade landscape staples. So the first thing we're going to do is make our landscape staples. So this is our number nine wire. We're going to cut this um, in four places and make four different pieces out of this. So once you have your pieces cut, first thing we're going to do is straighten them. So I'm just going to kind of bend them backwards and try to straighten this wire as best as I can. Of course, these are just uh, landscape staples, so as soon as you use them, they're going to get bent up anyway, so it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect. Now, if you are making these, where you cut that with the bolt cutter, that is very sharp on the end, so you got to be careful. So I'm just going to center that up here on the jaws of the vise, and then I'm just going to bend it over. So you end up with a, this is a, I probably could have cut that into fifths. This is a very long staple. But these are longer and heavier gauge wire than what you would buy. So these are going to hold better. And then I like the flat top because it's perfect for your foot or maybe your rubber mallet or your hand to push them in. So I just kind of like this design better. All right. Last one. I don't know how many I got here. I didn't count. It looks like quite a few. All done. So now it's time to go ahead and cut some furring strips and I'm just going to try to cut a 2x4 into 5 strips and I just picked out some of my worst 2x4s, some of the ones that are like the, the most crooked and uh, at least they, they'll be more useful as a furring strip. So let's go ahead and get them cut up. Number one thing to have in the garden, 
something to kneel down on. So this, since these uh, furring strips are so thin, I'm going to pre-drill them. I'm kind of hoping that'll prevent them from uh, splitting. So I'm going to be using about an inch and a half long screw. That way I know it doesn't go all the way through to the other side. So I did get all the landscape fabric uh, put down and secured yesterday. I'm very happy with the way that it turned out. It did end up raining on me. We had a thunderstorm that kind of rolled through. Uh, so I didn't get any filming after that. And you're gonna see like probably muddy foot tracks all over the fabric from where I was putting down all the extra staples. I went ahead and, and put staples throughout the whole thing so it's nice and secure now. So pretty much the whole ground uh, of this garden is completely covered except for the south side so there's about four to five feet on this south side that's still exposed but this is this is a work in progress on this side this is where we're planning on building uh, I got some compost bins that I want to build on this side we want to try to put a small tool shed in this corner and then we may put in a couple more raised beds along this side so this south side is a work in progress and we'll come back and do some more stuff um, over here but yeah, I'm very happy with the way this has turned out. It will virtually be weed free in the garden now. The only place that a weed could probably possibly come through is gonna, you know, it's gonna be where we plant our plants. So it's gonna be a very pleasant experience gardening uh, this summer because it won't have to do hardly any weeding. It'll just be more about the planting and the harvesting. So I think it'll just, it'll be way more enjoyable. And this is a semi-permanent installation you know i'll probably only pull the middle just the middle of this up every couple years and maybe add compost and till it in but the, along the edges where we put the furring strips none of that fabric's going to come back up i'm going to leave it attached and on the ground until it goes bad so i mean that's why i think it's just fantastic i probably won't have to do much at all next year to the garden i'll just leave it down over the winter time and then come back and plant in the spring a lot less work now you guys may be thinking it's a little crazy that I spent two days trying to get this fabric down and attached very securely as well as I could to prevent any weeds and uh, you guys must think that I really hate to weed but um, you know you could you could spend you know four hours a week out here easy trying to weed the garden so this is probably less work in the end but it is it's gonna make it just way more pleasant of a gardening experience especially in the hot summer months we're doing this now when it's not as hot so yeah, I think this is great. So let's go ahead, I'll take a closer look at the fabric and how it turned out. So 
So you can see the furring strips along the edge of the raised beds clamping that fabric down and that's just preventing any weeds along along the edge of the raised beds. And then of course right here at the door, this could be a, a trouble spot. So we folded the fabric along here and uh, made a nice edge but we're gonna have grass growing right there so I'm thinking about putting some landscape like some pavers and putting pavers out there under the door and then that'll give me something to run the weed eater against so I can trim the weeds and not tear up the fabric but I think overall I mean I think this is all looks really good the fabrics down we've had some you know we got some rain and some wind and none of it pulled up so one issue is when you put this in, of course, when you melt these corners, it's going to kind of melt it away. So you end up with a gap kind of in the corner where possibility that uh, weeds could grow through. So you can't really tell it here. It doesn't look like there's any spots that weeds can grow through on these. But what I've done is I take a piece of fabric and tuck it into the underneath the, underneath the rest of the fabric. So you can see this piece of fabric's in there right here. And so if I melt this too wide, that gives me another barrier that no weeds can come through. So I just took a piece of small piece of fabric like that, and I would tuck that in each one of these corners. And just to make sure there was no place that light could make it through or any weeds uh, would grow. So I think it's pretty, pretty secure as far as, you know, I won't get any weeds in the ground here. Um, so pretty happy with the results. Now, like I said, the south side of this, um, you know, it's still a work in progress. So we've got some projects that we plan on doing on this south side. So in the middle of the garden area, we have set our tripod sprinkler here. And this should pretty much reach the entire earth garden and be able to water all this fabric. Hopefully it won't get that dry this summer. Hopefully we won't have to use it. But we just put it there so that we remember not to burn any holes in the ground there. Don't plant any plants there. So on the east side, we don't have as many raised beds on this side. And then right here, this is going to be where our tractor opening is. And we'll put a couple big gates there. So there's nothing that's really nice and flat to secure this fabric to with furring strips. So you got these posts actually stick out every eight feet. So we just put landscape staples in this and just stapled it to the ground. So it's not perfect on this edge. We will get weeds that will grow up along this edge, but I think if this is our only trouble spot, I think we'll be able to manage. So the way you plant in this landscape fabric is you have to burn holes in the fabric. That way you plant your plant in those locations, and then that's gonna be the only place that weeds could grow as well. So this is gonna be the only place that you need to pull weeds is just in these little three inch circles. And you can tell there's just not going to be much weeding in this garden. So this isn't going to be a completely weed-free garden. The raised beds are probably where most of my weeds are going to grow. But considering that, that is soil that we mixed up and it's nice and loose, it'll be way easier to weed than the clay soil that's under this fabric. And by adding this fabric down here, you know, I've covered, you know, 95% of my garden with this fabric. So I've really cut back the amount of weeding that I need to do. It's just going to be way more pleasant of a garden experience. So now that the woven weed fabric's down, it's time to start planting this garden. So we're going to get the uh, we're going to get the weed burner out, and we're going to start burning holes in this fabric. We're going to space them out accordingly for our plants. And then I've got a lot of broccoli and cauliflower back here that I need to get in the ground. I probably should have had it in the ground a couple weeks ago. And then we've got several other things that we need to plant. We've got tomatoes and peppers and eggplant. All need to go in the ground. And we're going to be growing a couple new things this year that we haven't tried in the fabric. And that's going to be green beans and corn. So hopefully, uh, sweet corn. So hopefully that works out well for us. So we'll have to figure out how we're going to uh, burn our holes. Or maybe use some smaller holes if possible. And uh, see how that works for us. But I am, I am hoping to get, if I have a nice week without rain this week where I can get out here, I'm hoping to have pretty much the entire garden planted this week. And then that way it's behind me and we can just start watching everything grow and I can move on to getting the hay equipment ready. So I hope you guys all have a great day today and we'll see you in the next video.